Chase Slate with Blueprint helps you save money on life's little surprises. Triplets. Start your path to saving today. Call 855-GET-SLATE. Story of horrors out of a reform school for boys in northern Florida. Several former students, now men in their 60s, attended the school decades ago and say its manicured gardens and winding paths hid a deep, dark secret. It was beautiful, and it uh, looked like driving onto any college campus in America. Roger Kaiser was an orphan around 12 years old when he was sent to the Florida School for Boys at Mariana. I thought nothing could be worse than the orphanage in Jacksonville, Florida, where I'd lived. But little did I know that I was uh, jumping out of the fire into the frying pan. He is still haunted by a building at the school called the White House, where he says students were beaten and abused. This was a concrete and steel building. And when you walk in there, it is like a dungeon. They beat me so badly that when I came out of the White House and went to the main office, I was so bloody they couldn't tell who I was. Now 63 years old, Kaiser formed a group called the White House Boys and revealed another hidden memory of the school's past, a cemetery. It's deep, way back in the Florida woods, hidden far from public view, has been for years. You come up on uh, 32 metal crosses stuck in the ground. No markers, no names, no nothing. Kaiser says a deadly fire took some of the students while others died from influenza, but he wants to know exactly who is buried there and how they died. Justice always cries out for uh, a conclusion. Florida Governor Charlie uh, Crist has called for an inquiry into the claims of the White House boys. If there's an opportunity to find out exactly what happened there, we have a duty to do so. Where are the records? Why was there no names placed on these graves? They were just forgotten. Joining us now for an exclusive interview are Roger Kaiser and Dick Cologne. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. What do you fear they will find in that grave, Dick? We fear that they're going to find bodies. But even more so than that, we don't know uh, how many bodies they will find in the graves. In some instances, we suspect there will probably be two, possibly three. And then uh, uh, when they finish the, uh, op- finish the autopsy, they're probably going to find crushed skulls and things of that nature. It's not going to be natural deaths and, th- and what have you. They're, they're going to see the brutality that, uh, that killed the kids. H- how many boys were subjected to this? Are we talking about hundreds, thousands? Oh, the school was open in early uh, 1900, so it would be, it would be thousands, thousands easily. Thousands of boys. Easily. Roger, what is the worst thing you ever saw in this building, in the White House? Um, I suppose the worst thing I ever saw was what I experienced, and that is when they finished beating me. Uh, when I came out of the building, I was so bloody, nobody could recognize me. Um, what was your crime, your offense? Um, <clears throat> I suppose to have said a four-letter word. Um, how can I say it? Uh, crap, meaning crap, when so I slipped on the diving board. So you a four-letter word yeah, after I said you crap slipped when and I, fell. F- when I slipped on the diving board. And you were beaten beyond recognition for that? Yes. And, and this is how minor the infractions were that would merit these sorts of beatings, Dick? Yes. From, yeah. What's the worst thing you ever saw? The beatings in the White House. I, I personally developed a, a way of getting beat. I went down 11 times, but the beater was, can I say your name? Was, was, we called him Daddy Hatton. He was the beater. But he was so tall that the, be, the belt that hit us, which was three-quarters of an inch thick leather would, that would hit you in the rump, uh, he was so tall that it ticked the roof. So as, as the belt came around and you <laughs> heard the tick, you were laying in the bed with your face down. The pillow would have literally pieces of people's lips and oh tongue and blood and everything all on, the, on the pillow. You'd put your head and grab the bars. And you'd go, mm, and then it would be, boom, and you know, you, you, you just met hell. Seems you just like you remember hell. this so vividly, uh, and it was decades uh, ago. And then I'd, uh, <laughs> and then tick, and then it would, mm, and boom, and God, when is this going to end? And you'd be yelling for God and your mother, too, at the same time. And then it'd come around, and it'd be the tick. And then, boom, you know. This stays with you. This has been with you oh, yeah. your whole life. Oh, yeah.
Tell me about the boys in the dryers, Roger. Uh, I worked in the dry cleaners, and I heard a commotion outside. And um, uh, I, when I went out, they were clearing the laundry, which didn't didn't happen. Nobody ever stopped work. And uh, I said, "What's going on?" And they said, "Well, one of the boys got up into the instructor's face, and they had a couple of boys put him in the tumble dryer." They put a boy in, in the, the dryer. dryer until he died. And I stood outside. Uh, well, I went back inside because my instructor was pretty mad at me for for sticking my head out the door because you didn't even move in one direction or the other. You were considered out of bounds, and you would get beaten. They brought his body out, slid him on the sidewalk, uh, going out to the ramp, and a black car came up and they threw him in the back seat. He bounced off the back seat into the floorboard, and off they went. And that's the last time I ever seen him. Let me ask you why it's taken you both so long to say something about this. I have worked for 17 years. I've written a book about this. 17 years. I've, I've written about this. I've tried to get the media. I've tried to get the governor. Even when uh, Jed Bush was governor of Florida, I brought it to his attention. Nobody would listen because they thought it was so horrific that it was impossible that a Nazi concentration camp type ordeal could possibly be going on, on in the United States of America. Well, Charlie Crist is listening now. He's uh, placed a plaque at the site to sort of right. in honor of the victims. Mm-hmm. Is that enough for you, Dick? Oh, no. What do you want to see oh, happen? No. They have to have an oversight. They have to have a, a real over, oversight, an oversight with teeth in it. Legislators think just because they legislate a law, the, the damn problem is going to go away. It's ludicrous. So they don't put any enforcement co- component into the legislation. And so if that doesn't, if that's not there, then the evil is going to continue. If someone doesn't come out of there handcuffed and go to jail, the evil is going to continue. It's, you know... I wrote, I was part of the guys who wrote the letter to the governor. We got the governor there, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, if you get the governor there, you can't, you're going to fix it. And he leaves saying everything's okay. You say, you know, what can we do? I mean, Christ, who else? The governor. Right, maybe he'll do something. Maybe Jesus, if we were able to do something like that, possibly. Dick Colon, Roger Kaiser, thanks for coming in and sharing your story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We appreciate it.